All right, everybody. Uh, we're doing mechanisms, and we're going to do a new one, and it's our final mechanism for our test one. It's called carbocation rearrangements, and this activity is designed to help us see when they happen and when they don't. So in the first one, uh, the H is taking its electrons and moving next door to the adjacent carbon. So this carbon that it moved away from will be left with three bonds, right? And you know what to call a carbon that has only three bonds. Uh, tertiary. Okay, tertiary and carbocation. Yes, what a tag team. All right. And I'll move the H over, but you didn't, I mean, you really didn't need to see it. There it is. You, you know it's there. I'll, wouldn't be a cation. There you go. So predict the outcome to uh, yes. Because a more stable tertiary carbocation is formed. And the most important part of that sentence is just the more stable part. Okay, you started with secondary. This is secondary, and it became a more stable tertiary. So yes, this rearrangement will happen. And it's called, no surprise, hydrogen shift. And the next one, no surprise, called a carbon shift. The ethyl group is moving with its electrons next door. You still got this one? And now you got this one over here, and the plus is there. And I love when we can do this, but you don't. I can say ditto. You can say ditto on your quiz. You got it. Yeah. You made a more stable tertiary cation from a less stable secondary carbocation. I'll give you the B answer. No. <laughs> it doesn't happen because it goes from one secondary carbocation to another. There's no reason for it to happen. That's why it doesn't happen. No gain in stability, no reason for it to happen. No uh, increase in stability. Rearrangement will not occur. Yes, that's my symbol for rearrangement. I wrote no twice, I don't know. No, because, oh, the no was part of the word. There was no increase, I need the period. There was no increase in stability, so the rearrangement will not occur. Next one, you think it's going to occur. Next one, you think it's going to occur. The result looks like that. Isn't it bad because it went from like four carbon? It went from uh, something about the ring is what you're talking about, I think. Yeah, because the carbon on the edge. The carbon on the edge right here, yeah. yeah. That that is a carbon that's uh it's it's an sp2 carbon. The C plus is always sp2 by the way. And what's the ideal angle for sp2? 
What's the ideal angle? What's the number? In a square, in a square, the angle is what? Ninety degrees, because it's a rigid geometric figure, right? Now, some of you, we didn't talk too much this semester about this, but this is called angle strain. Some of you did read about it. And also, also in cyclobutane, there is extensive torsional strain caused by eclipsing. Do you remember that? In small rings that are flat, there's eclipsing because the atoms are right behind each other, sticking off the ring. So it's bad. If you can get rid of the cyclobutane, then your strain is removed. So I'm going to say no for the first one and yes for the second one. And it's all really part of the same explanation. And for the second one, I'm going to blow it up. And I'm going to put some numbers on it. Maybe letters. A, B, C, D, E. The AB bond did not break. The BC bond did not break. The CD bond did not break. The AD bond is gone. No, because it gave the more stable ring. Here's the new bond. Here's the cation. Ring size five has much lower angle and torsional strain. So it's not just about what degree is your carbol cation, it's rings too. So what are the two strained rings? We spent no time on it last time. And most semesters I do. You probably watched videos where I did spend time on it. And I talked about strain, angle and torsional. And I talked about how to reduce it by making the ring bigger. But my question is, which two rings are the bad ones that have extensive angle and torsional strain? They're the really tiny ones. The rigidity is what causes the strain. And it's three and four. Cyclopropane, cyclobutane are very strained. That means they're very unstable, okay? So if they have any way to get bigger, they will do it. And I hope the last two examples illustrate the fact that that bottom one is the better one. It got rid of all that angle strain and torsional strain, well, it reduced them greatly. Propane, the smaller one. He asked which two rings again he wanted to review. Cyclobutane, cyclopropane suffer from extensive torsional strain and angle strain. So anytime you can get rid of them, this one won't happen because the, the ring still suffers from all that instability. I know a lot of you are saying, but it's a tertiary carbol cation. I just spent a whole bunch of time this weekend reading about tertiary carbol cations having the most hyperconjugation. That's a good thing, Dr. Whitaker. Yeah, but I'm, a, I'm reminding you there's some bad things going against that good thing. This thing is no more stable than the original because it's still got the angle strain. This thing's in a whole new league. This thing doesn't have the strain. So we got that. So that's all you need in your journal. And I just sort of summarized the third one was a hydrogen shift again. It wouldn't happen because the secondary cation became a secondary cation. 
There's no improvement. This was a carbon shift. This is a carbon shift. First one didn't happen because it's still got the unstable cyclobutane. Yes, it's tertiary, so it's got a lot of hyperconjugation, but it's still suffering greatly from the angle and torsional strain. This one got rid of most of the angle and torsional strain and it's tertiary, it's a win-win. But the big thing is the ring. Greatly reduced ring strength. Boom.